All right, it's the moment of truth. I'm gonna start the Ranger, or try to start the Ranger. Oh, well, that's a big bummer. Georgie, what do you think? This thing gonna run? It might. <laughs> Not eat your Wheaties. Oh, there you go. All right, so here's what the block looks like with the head off. Luckily, I got a new motor on the way and I got a spare motor if uh, that one doesn't make it in time for race week. Today's the day. We're gonna pull the motor on this thing, see what was giving us trouble on race week. I am working on getting another motor right now, but parts and supply is a little bit tough. But you guys are gonna be stoked to see what I'm getting for this thing. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it's happening. It's gonna be way overbuilt, which I'm excited about. I really like to overbuild my stuff and I kind of inherited this thing, a lot of parts and pieces to it. So we're gonna do this and do it right. All right, Georgie, what do you think? This thing gonna run? It might. <laughs> Throw it over here into the shop, it still starts. Didn't even need to jump it. Don't forget the floor. Ooh. All right, what are you doing, teeth and turbos? I'm trying to pull the intake. Okay, let's see I'm it. I figured out what's wrong with this thing. What do you think? Uh, it makes noise. I, I guarantee uh, what I guarantee what you did is kick the gasket and then compressed compressed some water, yeah. causing it to bend that rod. Bend the rod, and then it's. Uh, and then you got some Timmy. Been, uh, you got some Timmy two tapping going on in there. <laughs> All right, and things coming off. <sighs> did you not eat your Wheaties? Oh, there you go, big that. strong boy. First time. Big like strong. My first time pulling a motor out of. Are you excited? I am. Man, where did you get that shirt and that hat? Motion guys, I'm always looking it up. Intakes off. This is the old trusty intake that was on Leroy and Ruby. Yeah, now it's you know past the torch. Past you said the I want to build a race car. I said I got something for you. Mm-hmm. All right, till the next motor. Got the turbo kit taken apart and all the cooling system. Unplugged everything and took the intake off. Let's check out these intakes. Ooh. It's looking a little rusty. She's been sitting outside in the lean-to for about a couple months now. Hmm, not too bad. Motor's ready to come out. You really all rub inside? Ooh. Go ahead. This one. Stuck on this one dial pin. There you go. That drop. Trans dropped a lot. Oh, yeah, that. Well, I had her tight. The thing is where George put it at. Yeah, that guy George really can't trust it. As you can see behind me, I finally got the motor pulled on this car. If you can remember, we had issues with it on race week and had to cut it early. So I finally got to it. We got about four and a half weeks until race week 2.0, so I thought it was time. I better get to working on this thing. I do have plans for a new motor that's coming and I don't want to release the details on it yet until it is in my hands and we have it at the shop, but it's super exciting. The thing is going to be an absolute monster of a car. I really want to overbuild my stuff to prevent anything from breaking in the future. That is such a significant failure like we had on race week 1.0, but we're getting there. The car's getting, you know, baby steps to get to a point where it is consistently reliable, a lot like Garrett's cars. So, Got the motor pulled yesterday, and today I have a few other things I would like to button up. I need to get the motor put on a motor stand, so I went to Harbor Freight, picked one up for about 75 bucks. That way I can truly diagnose what's going on with this thing. Like we said before, we think it hydro-locked, we think it blew a head gasket, and hydro-locked on the passenger side, leading to a bent rod, which was causing the piston to then touch the crankshaft. So I'm gonna pull some parts off that thing today, maybe pull the head to see if that's all it is, and that way I can get some new uh, 
connecting rods and a head gasket and get the, the head remilled so that this motor's a good backup. In the car after we took it out, all this new uh, steel we put in has started to rust up pretty bad, so I need to pull the radiator. I also need to replace the front bumper cover. The front bumper cover got damaged during transport when we had to move the car from Colorado back to Kansas. So, you know, to button this thing up, I got to remove the coils that I kind of ghetto rigged over there on that shock tower. I'm going to go ahead and use the Motion Raceworks kit to mount them on top of the Cletus valve covers on the new motor. And that's about it kind of button up some more wiring. So I'm not gonna do anything with the trans. The trans itself was brand new when I bought the car. It probably has about eight to 10 passes on it. We've got about four weeks until race week. There's a brand new converter in it. The guys over at Circle D offered to tighten up the converter if I'm interested, but we're just gonna leave it how it is, especially with the new motor because the motor's gonna be making a lot more accessible power than, than the other block did. And so we don't really know if the, tor the, the converter needs to be tightened up or loosened up and it will break in eventually or a little bit after we start doing some passes on the car. Okay, this is pretty awesome. This Boxo tool bag roll, I literally use this to pull the entire motor out of this car and basically nothing else. The Boxo sponsors Garrett and I'm a big fan of supporting the companies that support my brother and so I paid full retail for this, but I use the heck out of this thing. A couple other brands that I really like that I've been using, he's associated with is obviously Motion Raceworks and Summit Racing. And then I even have Simply Safe at my office for all of my doors and my security system. So check out those companies, guys. They support him and are able to make him do a lot of the things he does to entertain you guys. So they're great companies and have great products. I highly suggest all of them. Go check them out. All right, so to uh, pull the motor, I use this Motion Raceworks lift plate. Now, this is for an LT, but I made it work on this LS block. So. Worked pretty dang good, and it has all the little bolts, so you can just screw them right back into here when you're done with it. So they're always there when you need them. Pretty sure this oil, even though it is new, is gonna have antifreeze in it because I did roll the motor just to get it into the shop. Let's see if I can get it without getting oil on myself. Oh, too soon. A little preemie there. All been there. Oof, looking like chocolate milk again. That was fresh oil we put in after we pulled the pan in the bottom end in, uh, in Denver. So there's definitely antifreeze in there. Oof. All right, now that I've got this engine mounted up, I'm going to pull the headers and the heads to see if in fact it was a head gasket that blew causing this engine to start knocking. All right, so here's what the block looks like with the head off. I'm not seeing any scoring or any burnt marks around any of these pistons or cylinders. The head shows the same thing. Almost no signs of a cooked head gasket. A little bit of interference there, but all around looks like the head and block are in good shape. So another reason why we thought the motor could be knocking other than a blown head gasket and having a bent rod is cam bearing that went bad. So I'm not gonna pull the cam on it today, but it's looking like that's where things are headed. And uh, unfortunately, this motor is gonna have to be taken apart even further to investigate why it's knocking. But hey, that's part of the process. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Luckily, I got a new motor on the way and I got a spare motor. If uh, that one doesn't make it in time for race week, luckily Garrett has uh, an extra motor laying around that he's gonna loan to me, which Gosh, I really hope my motor shows up because if I have to use his and something happens to that, that's just gonna be brutal. I'm sure he'll never let me forget that. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna get this somewhat put back together. So just to recap on the car, I need to take out the radiator and I need to take out the race fuel setup. I need to paint everything black because it's starting to get pretty rusty. Clean it all up, redo some wiring and get it dialed for 2.0, which is coming up in like four weeks. 
Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be using the motor that we messed up during race week, but luckily I have a better motor for 2.0, so. All right, it's the moment of truth. I'm gonna start the Ranger, or try to start the Ranger. I got the new PCM installed. I put a new IAC on. We're gonna get a new mass airflow sensor. I touched up some of the grounds. I got it wired back up, and it's the moment of truth. Let's see what this thing does. When I turn the key on, no check engine light. That's an issue, but it wasn't on before, so I'm thinking the bulb's burnt out. Got my switch. Damn. It doesn't start. I'm gonna get this thing on the charger and see what the deal is. Well, that's a big bummer. Now I'm hoping it's just uh, either a ground or a relay is bad. So let's go from there. So I got it hooked up to my truck. I've got three relays here that I jumped to test those to see if it's a bad relay as well. Let's see if that works. All right, key on. Clutch in. It's running. We might have done it. I had to cycle the key like eight times, jump those relays just to see if that helped. And uh, also the intake blew off when I started it because it backfired, so. I tightened that back on. I gotta get that mass airflow sensor replaced as well. But uh, we're back up and running, people. All right. Okay. Let's go. Two more things I need to button up before I take it to the shop. This intake tube just isn't gonna cut it. It's blown off a couple times. I gotta get a new coupler for here and here. Probably find some kind of PVC piping to do. And then I gotta replace this mass airflow sensor, but the housing is actually broken right there if you can see that. I didn't notice that before, so I just bought the sensor, but I need to get a new housing as well. And then three new relays because right now I have them jumped. I'd rather have it clicked off when the key is off and the fuel pump isn't always running. So, a few more things, just get her finished up. Got the new AutoZone oh. special intake on here. Used some JB Weld and closed up that hole next to the mass airflow sensor. Gonna let this sit overnight and then start it up and see how it does. Well guys, that wraps it up for today's episode. If you haven't heard, the Danger Ranger 9000 got postponed to October. Gary got really sick with COVID and in my eyes, family and health come over everything. He made the right move for himself by postponing things to October. Not only that, but it's been really stormy here in Florida, so he wanted to keep all the fans safe. Make sure you guys tune in and watch the race week progress that's going to be coming up really quick. You're going to see some more episodes of me getting the car ready, getting a new motor put in. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment. Really appreciate you guys watching today. Later.